was certainly zero surprise to me. Monday morning, got confirmation that there was some kind of loud noise consistent with an implosion event. I let all of my inner circle of people know that we had lost our comrades. New questions today about the international approximately $7 million search for the Titanic tourists. James Cameron calling it a, quote, nightmarish charade that could have ended days ago. I knew that sub was sitting exactly underneath its last known depth and position. That's exactly where they found it. I can't imagine what these poor families have been through being given false hope here, banging noises, da da da, this and that. Last night, the famed Titanic director, who's made 33 dives to the site, revealed he and his tight knit deep submergence community were made aware of what was likely naval intelligence. He tore into the sub company, calling the design critically flawed. It would be insensitive to come forward with a dissenting voice to the to the story that was uh, in motion at the time this was such a preventable tragedy and could a so-called death waiver prevent their families from filing lawsuits signing it assumes full responsibility for the risk of bodily injury disability and death since the sub hasn't been approved or certified constructed of materials not widely used in human occupied submersibles we go down two and a half miles to the bottom where the, the pressure is about uh, uh, 6,500 pounds per square inch. Back in 1997, James told E.T. about the dangers involved. His words are eerie as we now know the five passengers likely died instantly in the sub's implosion. One little pinhole leak in the submarine would fill it with water instantly and kill you in about two microseconds. James is even more linked to the second Titanic tragedy. The dive pilot was his friend of 25 years. The French explorer Paul Henri Narzolet, the widow of the CEO killed, was related to the real life couple depicted in this famous scene from Cameron's film. And here's another Hollywood connection going viral. This episode of The Simpsons from 17 years ago seemed to predict the tragedy. Searching for treasure with my long lost son. Homer, look! A father and son, submersibles, the wreck site, the loss of oxygen. This is just the latest example that seems to prove the show somehow knows the future. Pre COVID, this episode depicted the attack of an airborne virus without a vaccine. We need a cure! We need a cure! If you've been on for three decades, probably you're gonna hit it once in a while. Don't panic, just come up with a good story. No one walks into this surprised. And get this, a former Simpsons showrunner took a dive last year on the Titan. I was supposed to go with my wife. I kissed her goodbye knowing I, that that might be the last time I'd ever seen her. But adding to the heartbreak today, 19-year-old Suleiman Dawood was apparently terrified to take the trip with his dad, but did it as a Father's Day present. His aunt finds solace that neither suffered. To know that my Suli didn't feel a moment's pain, that his brain didn't even realize, that's relief. You're supposed to be right next to the phone waiting to hear any updates about me. I'm not like rocking out or whatever they're trying to accuse me of doing. And remember the flack British billionaire Hamish Harding's stepson got for attending a Blink-182 concert during the search? Well, yesterday, Brian Zoss shared a DM he says drummer Travis Barker sent him on Monday, which reads, praying for you and your family. I really appreciate love and support. It's not about me. 